Hi, my name is Carol Hamrick, and um, I'm here to tell you about my story. When I was 15, I became sexually active. Not because I really wanted to, but I lived a life of insecurity. And because of my insecurities and a fear of rejection, I really struggled in telling people no. After a few months, I discovered I was pregnant. I was 15. I hadn't talked to my parents yet, but um, I knew, obviously, I couldn't go for very long without telling them. So one Sunday night, I sat my parents down at our kitchen table, and I said, Mom, Dad, I'm pregnant. My dad uh, broke down and felt that he was a failure. And my mom says, well, out of all of my children, I thought you would be the one that would succeed. When my mom said that, that was something that I lived under for the longest time, feeling like I'm a failure. I said, I'm going to give the baby up for adoption, so you don't have to worry. I'm not going to mess up any further than I've already messed up. Grew up in a very small community, and there were about not even 800 kids in the four-year high school that I went to. And I was the only girl that was pregnant. I was a very high achiever when it came to my grades, and um, I was kind of known as the goody two-shoe and a bookworm. And so it was this shock of, wow, Carol is pregnant? There were whispers and pointing. So when I said I want to give the baby up for adoption, well, how are you going to feel emotionally from this? Uh, will you be able to release the baby? Are you ready to face the struggles? After a while of getting this barrage of questions, the next thing I decide, well, okay, well, I'm going to keep the baby. Then the counselor saying, well, how are you going to finish school? Are you going to go to college? How are you going to pay for your livelihood? What kind of job are you going to get? Are you going to finish high school? And on and on and on with all these questions. And I'm like, well, why are you keep on challenging my choices? And she's I'm not challenging your choices. I'm just asking you the questions because I want to make sure that you've evaluated the whole situation correctly and that you've considered all of the options and all of the issues that you will have to face, whether you get the baby up or get the baby. So, um, of course, I struggled with this, and I'm constantly thinking about what my choices are. I think it was around Christmas that I felt like I knew in my heart that really the best choice for the baby's life and my life would be to uh, release her to another family. She deserved the uh, opportunity to have a mom and a dad and not live in a situation with um, a teen mom who really couldn't care fully for her. And uh, so I stuck with that decision. And of course, um, I still had the challenges. The interesting thing is that the lie of the enemy was that Oh, you didn't do it for her benefit. You did it for your own benefit. Well, certainly some would say I benefited from that because life went on as what appears to be normal, but life really didn't go on as normal.
went into labor during our spring break. And so on Wednesday, I went to the hospital, had the baby, came home on Friday, and I was back to school on Monday morning. And so, like, life kind of went on as normal, but the baby's one month, one month old, so-called birthday. I was broken. I cried. Two months, I cried. One year, I'm thinking, wow, what does she look like now? Um, is she... What's it like when she's walking? And I had all of those questions that parents have as they observe their babies grow. And I wasn't able to have all of that. When she was 18, I thought, wow, maybe, maybe she'll try to find me. I put my name on a registry so that if she wants to find me, she can. I had a couple hours that I got to spend with her before I signed the paperwork. And that's the last time I've seen her. For a long time, I lived under the burden of shame and guilt. Even though intellectually, uh, I had gone to college, I graduated, I had a measure of success in my job, there was a long time that I felt that guilt, shame, the failure. Look at what you did. It was like the enemy would just bring up all of those thoughts, just throws it in your face, and so then you have to deal with it yet again. And even though I was redeemed, and I knew that my sins had been forgiven, I still lived under those words. I thought, of all my children, you would be a success. But I had to feed my mind with the truth. You know, David sinned, but he wasn't defined by his sin. He was defined by his heart toward God. And so I prayed, God, make me like David. I want to be a woman with a heart for you. I don't want to be defined by what I've done. I want to be defined by how your work defines me. For a long time, I didn't talk about um, what happened in my youth. The Lord had put it on my heart. I needed to be able to share my story so that I could help um, young people. That they would know the struggles that I went through and that they can avoid the challenges. They could avoid living under shame and guilt. This year I started working with the youth and the very first youth event I went to was about um, dating. Like, whoa. <laughs> and uh, I was able to share my story. Of course, when I shared my story, there were some gasps of, <gasps> and yet in the long run, there were several that said later that they thanked me for being transparent. So I feel I've already started laying out the groundwork and um, people are recognizing that my story can have an impact. If you're dealing with shame and condemnation and uh, guilt from um, past sins, you need to know who you are. I would encourage you to spend time in the Word and ask the Lord to um, reveal to you His truth and, and feed your mind with what that truth is and recognize that there isn't anything that 
we can do to be righteous and to be right other than repent, but that the grace of God is a free gift to us. He's given us His grace and there, there isn't anything that I've done to not have His grace. There isn't anything I've done to gain His grace. It's His unmerited favor. And since I have the favor of God, I need to accept it. And I encourage you to accept His grace as well. It's His free gift.